What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. In today's video, we'll be covering a topic that, I mean, maybe it's quite debated on YouTube, but it's a very personal topic. Every player has their own preference, and that is strings. So we'll talk about my journey with strings, gauges I've used in the past, brands I've used in the past, and where I am now, where I'm very happy with the string choice that I'm using. So background, I guess we could say, is I started playing guitar when I was 11 or 12 after watching School of Rock. I wanted to be like Zach Mooneyham with the Les Paul. And at the time, I didn't really think about gear or strings, whatever. Years passed by and I'm on the internet. What are Slash using? What are Angus Young using? And everyone's using Ernie Balls. So I guess as default, you know, I was playing Ernie Ball uh, power or super slinkies, the green pack, uh, 10 to 46. Played that all the way to Berkeley. I did at one point transition to top wrapping the string, uh, because I saw Joe Bonamassa do that. And I was a huge, I still am a huge Joe Bonamassa fan as well as Jimmy Page and Zach Wilde also did it. Phil X used to do it as well, but only on the G string, I think. Um, and the top wrapping was cool. And I still maybe didn't know what I was doing because I was still very young in my playing career. Um, and so when I went to Berkeley, guitar became every single day. So I stuck to Ernie Ball 10s. I noticed more like my sophomore year at Berkeley that the Ernie Balls were sounding great, but were dying really fast. So then I transitioned to Diodario, again, 10s, and then Diodario NYXL 10s. Love those strings. I think, to this day, those are my favorite 10-gauge strings. They feel, they feel great, and they break in really, really fast, and super easy to stretch. So I played NYXL strings mostly through Berkeley, and again, 10 gauge. At one point, before this was the trend on YouTube, I went to nine gauge strings on my Strat. So I had tens on my Les Paul and nine gauge on my Strat because I found that to be a good balance between the two gauges, the two guitars, sorry. I remember one day I was hanging with Tomo at Berkeley and he had a, his Duo Sonic that had, I think, 11s. And my God, I couldn't even do one bend because I was so used to these light strings, the 10s and the 9s. So I was like, oh my God, I, I, I can't even play this guitar. Even with 10s on a Strat at that point was still a struggle for me, was still like, this is impossible to play. I can play 10s on my Les Paul super easily, but 10s on a Strat, mm, hard. And then I, as more playing happened, I s realized that the nine gauge on the Strat was way too easy. Like, I, I would be bending without thinking of the note and just over bending, and it just became too easy. I know now people on YouTube are like, oh, nines are the way to go because bass and everything. Who, uh, who cares? Nines were too easy to play. So I keep playing tens on both guitars, and I still start dabbling with 11s, 11s top rep, 11 to 48, because at Berkeley, the amount of time I was playing, like in my junior and sophomore year, the 11s just felt better every time I picked up the guitar, still with Diodario. Um, 11s, I found at that time, where when you first pick up the guitar, it was a little stiff, the strings, but once you warmed up and kept playing for a day, the strings were perfect. Bending was easy. The low part was, the low strings were perfect. Just felt great. So at that point, 11 to 48 on my uh, Les Paul, 10 to 46 on the Strat. Fast forward, I moved to LA, more playing at that time. I still keep 11s. Uh, on my Gibsons and 10s on my Strat 
and my PRS super eagle. No. And that's perfect. I do think 10s sound better and they bloom better than 11s. Right. Um, and then I finally dove into the heavier strings when I went to Florida uh, during winter break and was doing gigs with my friend Kyle. He had 11 to 52 on his JD Simo 335, and those felt great. So what did I do? I stepped up and put 11 to 52 on my Gibsons. Uh, mostly my Les Paul top wrap. I just think it sounds better. And with that heavy gauge, it just makes it a little easier to play. Um, and to this day, I'm still using Ernie Ball 11 to 52 gauge strings on my Gibsons. Because I play my Les Paul so much throughout the whole day, the 11s, like I said, in the morning, they feel kind of stiff. But throughout the day, man, they don't feel loose. They're not, e they're not super easy to play. I think they're the perfect string for what I do. Recently, also, I put this exact same string gauge, 1152, on my Telecaster, which we'll check out in a bit. And then, as a huge Mare fan that I am, I realized John was not playing 10s, but rather 10 and a half gauge strings. Mega slinky. 10 and a half, 13 and a half, 17 and a half, 28, 38, 48. So an 11 gauge bottom. And obviously I have to try that. And this was a great string, right? At times when 11s felt impossible, this was a perfect combination. The perfect, how do you say, the perfect equalizer between the two strings. So on the Silver Sky, I have these. That will change though. I will put... 1152 on the Silver Skies. These Ernie Ball Burly Slinkies are my favorite strings. Yes, Ernie Balls may not last like Diodario. Diodarios have a different feel than Ernie Balls. And at this time, currently in my guitar playing, Ernie Ball 1152 is a string that I like. I have also tried... Uh, the very famous uh, Kurt Mangan strings. Those were awesome. Uh, I bought 10 gauge, I think, and they felt a little heavier. And I didn't top wrap. I strung through the Les Paul. Um, my buddy Dave really likes them. He plays them on his strats. Um, but again, after a while, after doing Skype lessons for three hours and recording here for a YouTube video, those strings became too easy to play. Right? Just too easy. And again, I go back to 1152 on the guitars. So now we had a brief introduction to my strings and what strings I used, how did I found them and everything. So now let's check out some playing parts. So pull out the Gibson, the K-Line Telecaster, and the Silver Skies. So I'll check it back in two seconds. So here we are for the playing portion of today's video. I pulled out the Silver Sky first because this has the lightest gauge that I have. Ernie Ball Mega Slinky, like I mentioned before, 10 and a half. 10 and a half, 13 and a half, 17 and a half, 28, 38, 48. This guitar will soon get the 1152s because at the moment it plays great, but like I say in the video, it's a little too easy to play.
ten and a halfs were great, but when bending. I do feel like if I don't think about the note, I will overbend. So here is the uh, middle position. Sound cool. And here is like, let's say, like the bridge pick, bridge pickup. Sound great. Just too easy to play in my opinion so now let's check out the telecaster so here we have the k-line telecaster this guitar originally came with i think diodario 10s from la vintage here in la shortly after as in when i came back home i put 10 and a halfs on there as well Shortly after that, I moved up to 11 to 48 because, again, it was too easy to play. And then this past Monday, I went to Guitar Center and I bought a couple of packs of 11 to 52 gauge strings. And I said, why not? I love that string anyways. Let's try it on the Telecaster. And so now the Telecaster has Ernie Ball, Burly Slinkies, 11 to 52. I was scared it would be impossible to play because of the low strings, but it's actually quite easy. I mean, I've had it out like this for two, three days now, and it's nothing crazy, honestly, nothing life changing. It it feels better, feels more stiff, which I what I wanted, and it allows me to more think before I play and not overplay because if I do, my hands get tired. <laughs> so let's check out the sound of this one. Here is a neck pickup. Love it. Middle. Feel awesome. Bridge pickup.
Love it. Like I said, I was scared, especially for these low string. But it's nothing, it's not that hard. The more you play, the more comfortable you feel with the higher gauge strings. It's like working out. Like Josh Smith says, the first day you can barely lift a couple of weights, but after a week you're pumping iron, no? Love it. Now, let's check out, I guess, my main kit, as Bonamassa says. So here we have the Les Paul top wrap 11 to 52 gauge strings. Neck pickup. <laughs> Obviously, as you can tell with the humbucker is much darker and much smoother. Here is the uh, middle position. This is my favorite setup, basically for Gibsons. Les Paul, top wrap, 11 to gauge strings, and I feel with this guitar, I can do anything, right? As mentioned before, when you're on stage and adrenaline is pumping, to me, this won't make you or myself overplay because if you overplay, your hands get tired. <laughs> Here in the studio after like three or four hours of Skype sessions, it still feels a little slinky, but I'm not working super, super hard. And again, even making the video like this, a couple hour process, filming, editing, playing, getting tones, everything, the guitar still feels fresh and I'm not over playing and not over bending because like I said, if I do, my hands will get tired. But this setup, 1152, Gibson Les Paul into a Fender amp. This is, I guess you can say, the Gabe Bergman classic kit. <laughs> um, so that is my string journey and why I love the 11 to 52 gauge strings. All righty, guys. That is today's video about strings, my string journey, and why I finally landed on my favorite string, the Ernie Ball Burly Slinky Set. 11 to 52. Took a while to get here. I mean, it's pretty heavy gauge string. Not gonna lie. I mean, especially with the trends on YouTube, nines, eights, tens, like, okay, that for me, that's crazy. Going that light is impossible for me. Again, I just want to preface that strings are all very, very personal. Just because somebody uses that gauge string, it works for them. It may not work for you. You can try it, and maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Find the string that works with your playing, your technique. Also, how much do you sweat? How much do you rust the strings? Also factors into play brands. What kind of, do you want nickel wound or whatever, or coated or all these different types of strings. Um, so it's a journey. And once you find it, stick with the string because it stays consistent. You don't wanna be changing strings every single day or whatever. Keep a set. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So, and that for me is Ernie Ball 1152. This is not a sponsored video. They don't even endorse me. I wish they would, but they don't. Um, so I just wanted to share with you guys my string journey and why I'm crazy enough to play a kind of heavy string. Um, so yeah, if you liked today's video, 
please press like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.